In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the filtered texture lookup node, which lets us incorporate things like elliptical filtering into our textures. So this filtered texture lookup is going to be found over in the Metal Ray Nodes tab. And if we scroll down and take a look inside textures, we should see the filtered texture lookup. So let's drop this in. Now we'll need a couple of extra nodes in order to make this work correctly. So let's first just simply double click on this texture node. Let's start by plugging in the texture itself. So we'll click on this. This will drop in the Metal Ray Texture node. So now we just simply need to go in and take a look inside the Textures directory and we'll plug in the image called Tileable. Alright, now once we plug this in, the image itself still won't show up correctly. And that's because we need to plug in some kind of coordinates in order for this to be displayed correctly, similar to what we had to do with the Texture Lookup node. Now, in this case, we're not necessarily going to plug in a texture vector node, at least not right away. Instead, we're going to plug in a different node. So let's take a look inside the Metal Ray tab. We could also just simply drop this in from here. But let's scroll down, and we'll add in the texture remap. All right, and this will become apparent here in just a moment why we need to use this texture remap node. And into this texture remap node, we'll plug in the texture vector. So let's scroll down into the textures area and plug in texture vector. Now you'll notice that the texture is displayed correctly. And let's just start by taking this and plugging it into the diffuse of our Lambert material. All right, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and make sure that this is assigned to the actual object. Now let's take a quick render and see what we get. All right, now we can see the actual image itself is displayed correctly. Now, in a situation like this, the need to use elliptical filtering is really not that great because you can see that we are really able to maintain a lot of the detail in this image without any kind of distortion. Now, to intentionally introduce a little bit of this distortion, let's go back to the hypershade. Now, let's go back to our remap node. And with this remap node plugged in, we can just simply start to increase the amount of repeating that happens on this texture. So if we were to increase this to something like 2, 2, and 2 for the X, Y, and Z axes, you notice that this texture is now repeated. And this is a seamlessly repeating texture. Now just to really in, uh, start to increase this repeating function, let's start to increase this to something like 15. So that way this texture has to repeat itself many, many times. And let's get in sort of close here, and this will really illustrate the need to use the elliptical filtering feature. So without the elliptical filtering enabled, we'll get a result like this, where as some of these areas start to get further away from the camera, you'll notice that there is just so much detail in this texture that it just simply cannot fit in uh, just these very small pixels. The pixels just aren't big enough to hold that amount of detail. And so we wind up with a lot of this noise and uh, uh, just some of these areas of distortion. Now this really becomes a problem whenever we are going to be moving the camera or if the object itself is going to be moving at all. We'll notice a lot of this dancing around of this noise and a lot of this uh, just sort of swimming speckles. So let's come back in and take a look at how we can start to enable the elliptical filtering to fix this. So let's go back to the texture filter. Now this is where we had to use the remap node. Now this remap node can now be used inside this remap slot. So let's just take it, middle click, and drag it into remap. Now once we do that, we are now using the elliptical filtering. So just for comparison, here's what we had before. If I save this, let's re-render this. And you can see with elliptical filtering turned on how this does a much, much better job of blurring out some of these areas that are going to be further away from the camera. So you can see with elliptical filtering turned on, this is relatively smooth versus what we had before with no elliptical filtering. So this becomes, like I said, a very, very useful tool to try to prevent a lot of this noise and uh, speckled swimming that you will get if you don't use this elliptical filtering. And notice that it only really has to blur these areas that are further away from the camera. You'll notice it actually doesn't do much blurring at all to these areas that are going to be uh, very well uh, visible to the camera. Now as far as the quality of this filtering, we do have some control over that. So right now with the max value set to 20, 
This is basically going to be sampling 20 pixels in order to arrive at this blurred result. Now as we lower this, let's say to something like 2, now this will be actually sampling a lot fewer pixels and so our blurred result should actually be a lot less accurate. And you can see really that that is uh, exactly the situation that we have with this uh, set to a much lower value. You can see we're sampling a lot fewer pixels and so as a result the uh, final image that we get back is a little bit more blurred than what we had before. Now if your situation calls for it, this may actually be something that's required if you do need this little bit of extra blurring to take place in order to eliminate a lot of the swimming noise that you may get. So that's a look at the elliptical filtering that we can get by using this filtered texture lookup node.